Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. So we did our video on buttermilk syrup. This is for pancakes the other day. So today we're gonna do pancakes. Now this is the same day I made this syrup, but I'm saying a different day for the video. So I've waited a long time to get this done. They're so simple. Everybody that I meet that has used my recipe for these says I will never use a different recipe for pancakes again. Now I'm not sure really what that means other than they really like them, I know that, but I don't know what other recipe there is out there. This is the one I've always used. So let's go over here to the island and I'm gonna show you how to make my special pancakes. All right, over here at the island and I kinda have most of my ingredients right here around me. So the first thing we're gonna start out with is just one cup of plain flour. This is unbleached organic flour. Um, it's not enriched with anything because nothing's been taken out of it. It's just wheat flour. Now it's not whole wheat as far as what you're thinking, like the kind of grainy type. It's just unbleached, plain organic flour. So use what you have. One teaspoon of baking powder. This is the baking powder that I use. So we're gonna put our dry ingredients in the big bowl and our wet ingredients in a smaller bowl and then combine them once we get them all mixed up. Half a teaspoon of salt. This is just Himalayan pink salt in here. A fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. So I'll put half of that half a teaspoon, which is a fourth. Now I have my griddle already preheating over here. This is a ceramic griddle. This is not Teflon, so nothing toxic coming off of it, but I have it heated to 400 degrees. And that shouldn't take too long for it to get heated up right. Mix our dry ingredients up just a bit before sticking your spatula into your wet ingredients. Just to get it mixed well. And set that aside. All right, in this I'm gonna call this a bowl, even though it's a large mixing, or large measuring cup. We have uh, three tablespoons of either melted butter or oil. I'm just gonna use uh, organic olive oil that I have here. And I need three tablespoons, so just below a fourth of a cup. Because four tablespoons is a fourth of a cup. So just below that is three tablespoons. I need a tablespoon of honey, which I did not grab yet. Also gonna add an egg to that. Stir that up just a bit. Mostly you wanna just get the honey off the bottom of it and mix it in with everything because that honey is very thick and it will sink right to the bottom of whatever container you're using. Okay, that looks mixed up really well. If you can see that. And then in here we have about three-fourths of a cup of buttermilk. So we have buttermilk pancakes and then buttermilk syrup to put on them after a while. Can you tell there's a theme going on? 
but if you've never had buttermilk and you're kind of unsure of it and thinking, oh, it might be funky and it might not taste good, let me put your mind to rest. You are going to love these. I've never known anybody who didn't love these, so you would just be an anomaly if you say, these just don't taste very good. Because they do. They taste very, very good. All right, get that all mixed in together and we're just gonna combine the wet and the dry ingredients in the bigger container. This is the perfect day to be cooking uh, pancakes on this big griddle because it is super cold outside. It's, I think, single digit temperatures, unless it's moved up to 10 since I've checked it last time. Okay, again, just making sure that the honey's off the bottom of the container. When you get ready to pour it, I made kind of a well in the center of that. We're gonna pour this directly on it, clearing out all the ingredients with our spatula. I have my sausage patties cooking over here on the stovetop because those will go in the package along with the pancakes and the syrup. All right, it is of a little bit of benefit, if not a big benefit, to mix this up and just let it sit for a moment because you're going to be activating the buttermilk reaction with the baking soda and it's going to kind of get foamy. Not foamy like the syrup like you saw a while ago, but still going to get a little bit smoother than what it is now. It looks a little lumpy when you first mix it together. You don't want to over mix it. I'm going to grab this camera and show you what sausage patties look like. These are our homemade sausage patties. We'll link the recipe for these, or the video that shows how to make homemade sausage from bulk ground pork in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this burner off because those are cooked all the way through. We'll just keep them warm right there. There's our dressing that we're going to be using in a minute. And that is getting nice and hot. And this is a must to use when you're making pancakes. This is an ice cream dasher. See how the little thing inside moves when I press on the handle? And this is going to help us get out even portions for our pancakes. Okay, I wanted to show you this at first too. This I just went and grabbed this with my stack from my stack of aluminum pans. This is what we're taking over to our neighbor's house with. And this is the parchment that we're going to put in the pan. I don't like food that touches aluminum. Ugh. It just sometimes absorbs it and it gets all shiny, on, so not good. So we're going to take this, wad it up, and the purpose in doing this is so it will lay down in the pan. You don't wad it up like that it just keeps popping back out and rolling back up in the shape of the roll that it was in all right I'm hoping that you can see this well and I think our pancake batter is ready to roll I love my big griddle you can easily put these in just a cast-iron skillet 
Uh, don't heat it up too hot because in that case, what's going to happen is it's going to burn on the bottom, but the center of the pancake isn't going to be done. So it's going to be runny in the center and then burn on the bottom. So if you can gauge your temperature to 400 degrees, these cook really, really well at 400 degrees. But all that being said, you can cook it in an electric skillet, the kind that has a lid on it. Just don't put the lid on it. Or my favorite is the griddle because I have a thermostat there and I know that it's right at 400 degrees. Okay, the light just went off and we're ready. So I'm gonna get an even scoop of the batter and start putting these on. This just makes a regular small batch of pancakes, but it's easily doubled, tripled, whatever you need to do. Usually the last bit in there I have to scrape together with my spatula to put in my dasher. Perfect. Any little bits of batter that's left, I just add to the top of the ones on the griddle. And what you want to do, the easy way to know how to turn these over is when you start seeing bubbles form in this as though it's boiling from the bottom, which is exactly what's happening, but you'll see the bubbles form and then start to pop, and that's the time you want to turn the pancakes. You don't want to just keep flipping them over and flipping them over. You should be able to flip these once and then flip them back over to its original side just to make sure everything's cooked evenly and then take them off the griddle. And these only take just a few minutes to cook once you get it on this because this griddle is very, very hot. Normally, of course, the first one you put on the griddle will be the first one to start forming bubbles, so I'll just keep an eye on this one over here. I see a little bubble forming there. I'm going to flip this and just see. Ooh, that one got pretty dark. Maybe I'm not paying attention, close enough attention. These are all pretty dark. We just won't cook the second side as long. The thicker the batter, the harder it is to see the bubbles. Maybe that's why I wasn't seeing them. I'll just, I'll make up something and go with it. That side looks pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn our griddle off because I think they're cooked almost all the way through, but that residual heat will just continue to cook them. I'm gonna put our sausage patties on one end of this pan. I guess I could bring this down here so you can see what I'm doing. Here's our sausage patties. this into the corner over here. Okay, 
These look great. So you can see what that looks like on that side. You can see that it's cooked all the way through from the center of it. You can tell where that cooked up to here and that cooked down to there. So I think we're good. Perfect. Okay, I'll take the larger ones and put them on the bottom. Okay, speedy quick, put a piece of parchment over it. Again, just so the aluminum foil doesn't touch it. Not that my neighbor would care. He doesn't care. I care. I don't want the foil touching the food. Okay. See how that misbehaves when you... Misbehaves when you don't wad it up. Stay. <laughs> Put a piece of heavy duty aluminum foil on it. And because my husband's having an office day at home today because of the weather. He's going to be kind enough to take this over to my neighbor's house for me. Okay. All right. You know what this means. I'm going to have to make a batch of, of pancakes <laughs> to do a thumbnail <laughs> so you can see what the buttermilk syrup looks like on the pancake. So, oh, well, we're going to have to suffer through that. So, hey, thanks, guys, for joining us. And the recipe is in the description as always, and we look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. Hi, these pancakes, though, they're so good. See ya.